Okay, we are recording. Okay, I guess I need to click on continue on my screen. Okay, all right. Okay, so I guess I need to go to my language first, right? And call the meeting to order. Okay, pursuant to chapter 20 of the acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. There are instructions on the uh, uh, Amhersttown website, www.amherstma.gov. Um, no in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be, made, will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via, via technological means. I call this meeting to order. Okay, and this meeting is being recorded by the town of Amherst. If anyone else is doing so at this time, please notify me now. Okay, hearing none, I will bring up um, today's items. So we have no members of the public in attendance at the moment, right? That is correct. And then we need to talk about the minutes from March 10th, 2022. Correct. I move, um, Lee, have you had a chance to look at those? Yes. Uh, I move to approve the minutes of March 10th, 2022. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. All right. Take it away, Kim. I will scroll down here. So the, the first thing on our agenda today is the motor vehicle excise commitment number seven. Oops. I forgot about the week, the excise weeks. Um, so, so here are the excise weeks for uh, March 7th, 2022 through March 11th, 2022. Um, you will see, let me get my little, you will see over here. Ooh, mm -hmm. I'm not liking the red. Um, you don't know how to change that, but you'll see there that's for 2020. This is for 2021. And this list here is for 2022. So we have uh, calendar year 2020. Uh, there were two abatements for that week, totaling in 136.69. There's only one for the calendar year 2021, totaling in $5.45. And then for the calendar year 2022, there were 20 abatements, totaling $1,297.32. And I know I'm slow, but refresh my memory as to why it is that we have 20 and 2020 and 2021 abatements on there. So um, you have three years uh, to be able to abate a tax bill or one year after the date that it's been paid. So um, also the registry can send us commitments if, if somebody has been missed in the prior year or if it went to the wrong town, um, they would send over uh, a bill, for example. So if somebody has processed an abatement for one of those years because they have not yet paid the bill or they've realized that they were due a refund because they got rid of their vehicle um, and canceled or transferred their plates. As I said, they have three years to be able to process that. So that's why we see that there are three years on this, this commitment. We just happen to have um, three years of, of excise that people wanted abated mm -hmm. for you know one reason or another. And again, they provided all the paperwork showing that they were no longer in possession of the vehicle, and then they either transferred or canceled the plates. Okay. Uh, I move to approve these abatements um, from uh, the week of March 7th, 2022. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. So we will move on to the next week. So we have another week of March 14th through the 21st. And this, as you'll see again over here on the left, is just for the calendar year 2022. Um, so there were 16 abatements that were processed during that week, totaling $1,190.57. Move to approve those abatements. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. The following week, so we have March 23rd through the 25th, there were 33 abatements processed for calendar year 22 in the amount of $5,071.03. Move to approve those abatements. All those, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. And then again, the following week, we have another 
Uh, well, first of all, we have week um, March 28th through the 31st for 2022, 14 total abatements. And then we have one for calendar year 21. Uh, the calendar year 21 abatement was for 7787. And the calendar year 2022 abatements, the 14 of them, we're totaling $1,926.76. For a total of $2,004.63. Correct. Uh, move to approve these abatements. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Okay. I think this might just, oh, this is a... That's a personal exemption. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's a personal exemption. Or okay. blind for blind. As I that's recall, we we reviewed this. We didn't we review this in executive session and approve it. That's yes. Correct. Yes, we did. I think that was stuck on there in error. Okay. Yes, it was, and I apologize. I forget. Right. We don't have to put those on. Okay. It goes with that, and that's um, same. These are the same thing. These were already approved in um, executive session. Those were mm -hmm. overvaluations. Yep. Sorry about that. I forgot. I'm not supposed to include those. So is there something on here we need to look at? Um, nope. This was just no. the total. Um, sure, I got it. Okay. All right. You had already approved those. Yeah. So, um, so here is where I had originally started going. Um, okay. We have the commitment for the second uh, billing of excise. So this is the commitment that comes from the registry with the pile of bills that um, that we send out totaling $192,024.35. Um, so this page here you will see is the commitment that we, or the warrant, excuse me, that we send to the collector's office stating that there was that well, again, $192,024.35 worth of tax bills that we expect to collect. Um, and then yeah, on the cool. second page, you will see the commitment to accounting with the same number there. Um, and I believe there should be the munis commitment as well. So you'll see this top number here. I'll just put a, a line there. Um, you'll see the nine, $192,024.35. You do see the $3,000 that are exempt or the $3,000 worth that are exempt. So the total here on the bottom is different. And that's just because um, that includes the exemptions, but we don't bill them, which is why it's uh, $192,024.35. Um, so our signatures. Ah, welcome, Ken. Hello. Hi, Ken. Sorry, late. Okay. I had to that's okay. All right. I kept searching for the link. I couldn't find it. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, so we. Uh, so our signatures are all over these documents, right, Kim? Yes. So approve. I, I'm moving to approve our signatures on this um, commitment. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. Okay. So moving along, you're going to see another one almost exactly the same. This particular commitment was for calendar year 21. So again, um, this came from the Registry of Motor Vehicles. So you'll see that this was sent, um, as you saw, the abatements that were able to be processed for 21. This could be a reason why somebody got, um, a, a, somebody had registered a vehicle at the end of calendar year 21, um, and maybe they got rid of it already. So that's why we might have had an abatement. Um, this particular abate, uh, this particular commitment is in the amount of $42.06. Um, this is the page that goes to the collector's office, the warrant. Uh, again, here is the page, the commitment that goes to the accounting office, and you'll see that same amount of money there. Uh, and then on the back page, you will see um this hold on there there we go uh you will see the 42606 right there out of muni so you'll see that is the amount that we put in for billing okay i move to approve our signatures on those three documents second all those in favor please say aye 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 okay <clears throat> you're really marking um, these up in blood aren't you kim <laughs> i know i don't really like the red but i don't know how to change it so. <laughs> um okay. i'll work on that for next time okay um so all so there's a pile as you know of these uh warrants to the collector and commitments to accounting for uh supplemental bills um 
So we'll go through each one of them. We can motion them separately or together. It's up to you guys. But basically, the, the these bills were um, buildings that were under construction, um, being built or having a large addition added in some cases. Um, so this supplemental bill is from the date that they received their occupancy permit until the end of the fiscal year. Um, so we did them all separately because the paper trail is much cleaner and easier to follow than if we actually do them all clumped together. So okay, again, so we gonna, can- I'm gonna, I'm gonna suggest that we, unless somebody uh, on the board suggests uh, pulling one out from this group, um, I'm going to suggest that we look at them all and then vote vote on them together. Is that, and that's okay? fine. And we can go through them and decide if we want to do that after. So um, okay. this first one will be for 13 Vista Terrace in the amount of $2,255.56. Uh, $2 Again, this is the page, the warrant to the collectors. You'll see the, you're going to see all the warrants first, um, I believe. This is the warrant for the CPA tax, which is $67.85 based on that value that goes to 13 Vista Terrace. Um, and then you will see the commitment to accounting um, with the real estate tax in the same amount of $2,255.56. And on the same page, the CPA for $67.85. Um, we also have the backup out of Munis so that you can see um, that we did actually input it that way. And you'll again see that that um, right here is listed the 225556 and the 6785. Um, Refresh my recollection what Munis is again. Munis is our billing software. Okay. Um, so you just see again, um, that one looks like it's just showing the, the, the rate. Um, and here is just my backup paperwork as to where I came up with that figure. So um, you'll see this on every single one of these. So I'll scoot by this quickly after we just take a brief look at it here. Um, but again, you'll see I have their customer number in the billing system. I have what kind of property it was. So most of them are single families. Um, there's that one in the middle, the 03, uh, 013, which is a mixed use property. You have their parcel IDs, their street number and name, and then we go to for the value that they were billed at in 2022, the value that they were built, um, that they were adjusted, and then it go, so on and so forth with the tax dollar, and that's how I came up with, and, and the CPA, um, and that's how I came up with that particular figure. So um, any questions, but, we can always come back to that as well. Jim, Jim, do you know if we've done this in past years? Yes. Yep. Um, these were done in past years, but uh, David used to put them all on one commitment. Um, okay. I feel that it is a little easier to follow if you're looking for something in, in the future to just have them separated out. Okay, that's fine. Um, I think we have to go over the billing, those three pages. No, that. yeah, we don't have to go. Just these quickly. It's um, okay. 22 South Middle Street for uh, 1,756 is the actual tax um, commitments to the, uh, excuse me, the warrants to the collector, um, $52.82 in CPA for that property. And again, you'll see the commitment to the um, accounting office with those figures here listed exactly the same for the collector. You'll just see again, the munis yeah, You can print skip out. all the anyway, these three uh, pages. Yep. Unless somebody um, okay. else them. So then we have 21 Baker Street. We have a tax dollar amount of $2,349.93. Warrant to the collector. The uh, CPA on this particular property was $70.69 in addition to what they've already been billed. Uh, again, notice uh, to the accountant with the same numbers. We'll skip over these. It's just the Munis printout and my backup. Uh, next property was 462 Main Street um, in the amount of $15,312.54 in tax. This was the mixed use one, right? Uh, yes, this was the mixed use one. Mm -hmm. um, and again, this is an additional tax from what they've already been taxed and is the um, 
the either addition or extra building or whatever it was that they were doing on their property. Um, so CPA in addition was another $460.63. And then again, the page to accounting with those numbers. And we'll skip over these. Okay, next is 1530 Southeast Street. Totaling tax is $2,142.11. And the CPA is $64.44. Um, again, you'll see the page two accounting with those same numbers. And we'll skip by the Munis printout. And... 94 Pond View Drive is $2,549.77 in tax on the warrant to the collector and $76.70 on the warrant to collector for the CPA tax. Uh, commitment to accounting again, you'll see those same figures. And that was it. So I just wanted to make Note on this here, you'll see this figure here, $27,159.06 is the total amount that we build in supplemental bills. So again, just to reiterate, supplemental bills are the completion and occupancy permit has been given. Um, and you'll also see just for note, this column here has the occupancy permit completion date. So this was when they were, um, given the, the permission to use this building or live in this building um, at full occupancy. Uh, so that is, we take that date and the end of the fiscal year as June 30th, and we figure out the calculation to get that tax dollar. So um, that's in addition to whatever their final tax bill was based on what was there as of January 1st. So will you have like other ones that are done like in May and will you have more of those? Um, so if they're done in May, then we don't do them because they generally will update on the preliminary tax bills if we get the occupancy permits in time. Um, okay. And then again, with the final tax bills, you know, if there's something that after the preliminary bills are mailed, if something really, really significant, these have to be 50% or more of the value changing, um, oh, okay. then we would, we would do a supplemental bill for that too. So they don't get walloped in the final or preliminary tax bills. Okay. Um, so if everybody's comfortable with all of those, we can, we can do the motions on all of them. Um, if you have any other questions, you know, just let me know and we can go back. Um, I move to, we, go, go ahead. ahead. No, go ahead. <laughs> um, I move to approve our signatures on all those um, supplemental uh, documents, including the, um, the, the warrants. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. That's unanimous. All righty. So moving along here, we have a personal property supplemental bill. Apologies. Uh, I forgot about this one. Um, this one was $3,535.82. So this was a personal property account rather than a real estate. So we should mm -hmm. actually um, do this one separate anyway. Um, but again, so this one doesn't have CPA. A personal mm -hmm. property does not get the CPA charge. So $3,535.82 uh, was- Where is this? Was, Where is this? Do we know who this, this is? Or? Personal property is um, next amp. So this is solar. This okay. was a solar agreement. So what we do with the solar agreements is if the total value of the property doesn't come out to be what we were agreed on in the solar uh, pilot, then we either do an abatement to adjust that or we tax them at the correct amount to come up with that number. In this case, um, it was under by $3,535.82. And that's where this bill um, is for. So again, you'll see that to the accounting office and just our backup out of- Is that, is that essentially an agreed upon number with the company or? Yes, yep. So before, um, before the, the solar- company actually sets up and gets going and running. Um, they come to the town and, and they make an agreement with the pilot. So it's a payment in lieu of taxes. And so we have an agreement with them 
um, that says they're going to pay X amount of dollars each year. And generally that increases until the end of their term. Some of them go um, 10 years, some of them go eight years, some, you know, it depends on what the negotiation is at the time. Well, this um, is on college land. So we pick up some, solar tech. Some of these are on college land. You'll see, so this backup, you're going to see three times. So there's three of these. So the one that we're talking about right now is actually on Montague Road. So this okay. is this one here. Um, but yes, these ones that are at the colleges, the solar panels are not owned by the college, which is why we're able to collect that tax. Um, so here's so another the, one. Go ahead. Uh, so the difference number is what you um, originally uh, forecast versus what the actual was. Is that right? Yes. So this okay. particular one, I'm going to highlight it in red. I hope that doesn't make it too hard to see. Um, but that is what they were expected to pay. That's what we agreed on. Mm -hmm. This is what they actually paid so mm -hmm. far or what they were billed. So that's mm -hmm. why we come up with this 3000 that we need to bill them extra for because it then would come up. Oop. Hold on, I popped something up here. I don't know how to get rid of it. Push escape. Oh. Ah! Mm -hmm. Okay, there we go. Um, okay, so yes, yeah, so this 3000 would would total the $35,896 that, that they agreed with the town that they would pay for the fiscal year of mm -hmm. 2022. Yeah. So will billing adjust their billing in the future to be more on target or not? No. So the, the, the personal property account that we have will um, adjust accordingly each year. But if it doesn't match the agreed um, upon amount exactly, then we would do that adjustment, whether it be um, an abatement or whether it be that we have to build them again, a supplemental. Okay. Um, so moving along, we have another one here. This one's for Tesla. So this one is at Hampshire College. Um, and this one is in the amount of $1,318.27. So again, you're gonna see the warrant, the commitment to accounting, and then just the backup documentation. So you'll see that page again. Is this for their charging stations up there? Um, it could be, I believe they have some solar panels on some buildings. Oh, so I don't know if that charges those stations or, right, okay. or if there's something separate for that. Right. <clears throat> um, and then the last one is for Con Edison, which is at UMass and that's $14,542 and 88 cents. Um, so again, you'll see that warrant, the commitment to accounting and the backup documentation, uh, here again. I Curious why if we agreed up front what they're going to pay, why we don't build correctly? So it's all in how the computer systems work. Basically, um, if the because we can't really, I, I mean, I suppose we could go in and do an override, but with the tax rate, it would be more complicated to try to do it that way. And I mean, override as in like we put in a specific value that would come out to that tax, but we don't know what the tax rate's going to be until it's already set and our figures are already submitted to the DOR. So at yep. that point, it's just a matter of, of doing the adjustment um, because we can't, as you know, that the, the taxes are based on the value and the tax rate is where that tax yeah, dollar comes were, from. So that's why we do it that way. Yeah, the other two are pretty close, but Con Ed, we missed by a mile. Yeah, and that so that one, it, as you see in the past, it wasn't that big. So I'm not sure exactly what happened there. So that's something that I'll be looking at this year before the um, tax bills go out and see if, you know, what had happened that that one was so far off. Because you see, they were only billed um, yeah. 26,000 and they should have been billed 40. So something mm -hmm. seems a little funky there because it went down mm -hmm. from yeah, what the, the past. So I'm not sure. So I, that is something that I will be checking into. I can't imagine it's something that will happen that often, but you know, you probably see things more like this thousand or 3000. Yeah. It almost miss, looked like they missed a quarter or something. Mm -hmm. it, it does. Yeah. And so it could have, I mean, it could have been something that they added. Um, maybe something I mean, got removed off the personal like property the account. The last four years, if they just continued that billing, they would have been fine. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> Okay. So, um, and then the last personal property, this was just one that um, for some reason got missed altogether last year uh, in, in 
fiscal 2022, um, totaling uh, $350.96 for Verizon Wireless. Um, so that is what this is here. Um, and again, the commitment to accounting and the warrant to the collector with all the backup documentation. Um, and this is the this is the personal property um, account and my calculations as to how I got to that number. So it's a little bit different backup than the others, but um, that is what we have for that one. So that's okay. all the supplemental bills. So we can, um, if, you, if you're comfortable again, we can do the uh, personal property supplemental bills separately altogether. All right, I'm, so I move to approve our signatures on those, um, on those supplemental bills. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. Okay. Uh, so moving along here, we have a rollback tax for Kohl's real estate, uh, Kohl's, DW Kohl's. Um, this one has, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, we build them for $5,943.02 for the property on Montague Road. Um, I don't know if you guys are familiar, but if you're headed up 63 towards uh, Leverett, this property is on your uh, right-hand side. It's a big solar farm out in the back. Um, so this one we will be adjusting because I was not aware of an application that came in for 61A. It came in a couple of days before I started. Um, so I didn't see it. And that's why I took the whole piece of property out of um, chapter 61 when that was not supposed to happen, only 1.65 acres was supposed to come out of, of chapter. Um, so there's just a little misunderstanding and I'm just waiting to hear back from uh, Vision as to why a value is not calculating correctly. So they're working on that currently. So we'll get this adjusted and, and present it to you again, but we do need to approve this because it was billed um, so again, $5,943.02, uh, warrant to the collector, commitment to accounting, and then the backup documentation um, here, which shows where I came up with that calculation, which again will be adjusted, um, and I will bring that to you. And then here is just another backup documentation of, of how I came up with that figure. So um, those will be redone and presented to you again, but for the moment, uh, we would need to vote on this um, to approve because it was committed to uh, a tax bill. So was this a 61A that we discussed before you came on board? I, I remember it, yeah. I think so. Yeah. Um, this basically what happened, I spoke with, I sat down with one of the foresters from Kohl's and he um, explained to me that there are four, I think four or five parcels underneath this particular solar farm. Um, uh -huh. And so that's why this one got a little complicated. And the fact that a few days before I started, they turned in their paperwork and it got processed and filed and I never got to put my hands on it. Um, so th there was just a miss timing, I guess. Um, and, and being that this is four parcels is why it's slightly complicated. So um, I can show you, let me stop sharing for so just let, a moment. Let me ask you, are we, are we overbilling them now? And then, yes. and then they're, they're getting money back. So they, so what we're going to do is actually before they make that payment, we're going to uh, adjust it so that they don't, we don't have to do it that way. Um, and I'm just waiting to hear back from vision as to why the value is not calculating correctly in their system so that I can then go ahead and fix that value. But what I want to show you is this piece of paper here. Um, See where my little arrow is up at the top here that. Um, okay, so I, I just want to point out right for, here. I this just want to point out for they... later. I just want to point out for later that um, this is one of the advantages of meeting in person is that we would mm -hmm. be able to see this a whole mm -hmm. lot better. Mm -hmm. I'm, um, I'm just lobbying so, the body in advance here. So <laughs> this little part right here is the only part that actually came out of chapter 61. The rest of this is continually farmed. So, uh, and then again, that was miscommunication because of when I started and when the application was turned in. So I took out the whole piece. Um, so we'll be adjusting that. And then I will again, present that to you. But for the meantime, um, let me bring that back up. Um, so there, there's gonna be an abatement for the, for Coles 
Yep, It'll be an adjustment. These these particular bills are done through general billing, so I'm not super familiar with how it'll be done. But yes, essentially, there's going to be an abatement on this one. Okay. Right. Kim, will they have to initiate it, or will the town initiate the abatement? We so we will because it was our error. Um, okay. So after speaking with the forester, um, they came to me because they said this seems a little funny, and we'd like to talk to you about it. I talked to them. I realized that it was our error. So we are able to process that. Okay. So does the money actually exchange hands? They, they pay us and then we pay this 5,000 will not, we'll adjust it before that happens. Okay. So, so this yep. is a bookkeeping kind of, yeah. Okay. Yep. And, and if this was to happen with anyone else, um, I yeah. just want to make that very clear. If we make a, an error like this with anyone else um, in rollback taxes, and we find out that we actually overbuilt them, we would treat it exactly the same way. Okay. So the term rollback taxes means that there is a town error that is being corrected? Uh, no, the, the rollback okay. tax is issued on chapter 61 properties. So if you are to take land out of chapter 61, so you're no longer going to farm it, yeah. whether it be, you know, um, okay, got it. Yeah. any type of farming uh, or recreational use, then you would pay the difference for the past five years of what you'd been getting discounted. Okay. Yes. Is there interest on top of that? Yes. Yep. So if you look at my sheet here, um, you will see this column mm. is the interest for each year that they pay based on um, the tax rate and the assessed value. Got it. So we just need to approve this. And then again, once I get that value fixed, I will bring it back to you with the adjustment. Okay. I, so I move to approve our, our signatures on this documentation for the uh, adjustment. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. Okay. I'm going to stop sharing because I have just the assessor update. Um, I have some questions for you guys, and then we can move into executive session once we do that. So um, for the assessor update, uh, basically what's going on right now is we have put out the request for proposals to help us with the revaluation for the fiscal year 2023. Um, the uh, due date was just the other day, um, and we only got one bid, so we will be moving forward with that process. Um, Vision is coming out at the beginning of next month to help me uh, put the income and expense information into the software system because I haven't done it before with Vision. Um, we, I will be taking a class actually in May. We have a Vision conference um, next week and then I'll be taking an assessor course through the International Assessors Association in May. Um, we are finishing up entering a building permits so we can get out and do our, our permit inspections. We're a little bit behind on those, but nothing to worry about yet. We have plenty of time to get those done. Um, and I think otherwise, you know, we're working, Lauren from the DOR has come in and taken uh, all the record cards that she needs to uh, go through and check to see what's what's going on in town. Um, she sent a request a while back for me to print a number of records. Um, but what, what percentage are the about? Um, so she, the request that she had sent me was, uh, I would say a couple hundred record cards. Um, and okay. that includes personal property as well. Um, specifically, she also asks for any board members. So, of, of course, all of you. Um, if I had, if I lived in Amherst, she'd be asking for mine. Uh, anybody who who works in the office, she wants. If they live in Amherst, she wants their their record card to make sure that they're fair and equitable. Um, she came to review our maps and our office uh, data collection manual. Um, and she will be back to look at our liens for chapter land to make sure that those are all correct as well. Um, so we've already started working with her on that for the revaluation. Um, and then we have just our daily stuff that happens every day, you know, emails, excise abatements, so on and so forth. Um, How do we stand so with inspections? Was that what you put out for bid? 
Um, so the, the, the bid that was put out was for the uh, revaluation. So that is um, some inspections that need to be done, but it's your typical, you know, you go out in the springtime, you do your building permits, you do your sales analysis, you do your cost table analysis, you do, you know, it's basically everything that we do for um, your regular interim year, uh, but then also um, if anything else comes through from the state requesting that we do extra work on such and such, or we look into this before the end of the year, um, then we would do that. And then it also entails a process of putting our values out on our website for people to be able to review for a week um, to see if there are any errors on their record card. For example, um, a shed that they don't have, a bathroom that they don't have, you know, so on and so forth. Um, so you, not necessarily how like, know how do you let people know? So there? in the past, it was put in the newspaper. Um, the DOR has uh, changed their ruling on that and we no longer have to put it in the newspaper. So it is posted on the website on the front page of the town website. So if someone is to look at that, um, a lot of time word travels quickly. Um, and people know that that's coming. So the people that are aware of that pass that along usually to, to colleagues and friends and um, so on and so forth. So do you know the week now? I don't yet. That usually gets set a little closer to um, when it actually is going to get posted. Generally speaking, I think it's, it's sometime in November, uh, late October, if we're early on things. Um, but I would say November would be a very safe month to say that that would happen. So help me out as far as the bid got put out this year, and we haven't done that in other years. It's yeah, we do. Um, we do it every five years for the revaluation, and then okay. we also have a different one that will be put out later on um, that is done every ten years for the cyclical inspections, and that is inspections on um, every property in the town. And so that is the state requires that we at least attempt an inspection on each and every parcel every 10 years. And again, with that being said, each and every parcel has a different 10 year schedule. So Ken, if I come into your house today, your 10 year schedule starts today. Um, Lee, if I was in your house last year, your 10 year cycle started last year. Um, so, so on and so forth with that. Um, so each and every parcel is different, but they look at our percentages to make sure that we have completed those um, within the 10 year cycle of each parcel. So, so that's a totally bids, separate bid that we have not put out yet. Out. The one yeah. bid already went out. Will the second bid go out this year? Or? Yes. Okay. And how do you feel we stand with the work on the two bids? Or is it normal? Or are we behind a little or ahead a little? Um, I think with, I mean, with the revaluation, completely normal. Um, okay. With the cyclical uh, program, I haven't yet dove into that too, too much. Being new to the community, I would assume that we would be a little bit behind along with every other town in the state of Massachusetts. And for that matter, if, if every state has this requirement, I would imagine everybody's behind because of COVID. Because okay. we weren't allowed in people's houses, nor did people feel comfortable going in people's houses. Sure. So I think we're slightly behind. I don't think we're in bad shape by any means. Um, but I think the requirement is slightly behind. So, so ideally, second, are you supposed to be doing, uh, are you supposed to be, have one tenth of a load each year? Is that, is yes. That, oh, okay. Yep. And, and a lot of assessors will wait till the, till the end of the, the 10 year cycle and try to load it at the end three years, because then you're getting the most accurate data. Because okay. for example, Rich, if I was at your house 10 years ago, um, and I haven't gone back since, I mean, you could have done a lot of things or not done a lot of things that have changed the value of your house drastically. Well, my lips are sealed about that. <laughs> but I mean, you know, if, if, if there was um, an addition, say, pulled without a permit, not that anybody would do that, but I'm just throwing out an example and no, we don't know I, about it because it's on the back of your house and your backyard is fenced. Yeah, no, our, our guys have been pulling their permits. So, yeah. so, so it's just an example of something that may happen. Um, also, the other direction, too, is, you know, maybe something has occurred and you just maybe you lost your job because of COVID and you just don't have the funds to be able to upkeep your house and it's actually falling apart. Um, maybe, you know, something like that has happened and it's, so it's, it's the other direction as well. So that's why okay. I think people try to wait till the last three years to really get that moving. Okay. So time wise, the, the first revaluation bid, that will all be done this year. 
Yep, that has to be done by the setting of our tax rate. Okay, what about the second one with the, the cyclical? So the cyclical program has to be completed by the end of the fiscal year. Um, with that being said, and all towns being slightly behind, uh, I imagine the DOR is going to be slightly flexible as long as we have a plan and we're moving on it. Okay. They're going to be okay with that. So when you say fiscal year, is that June 2023? That's correct. Okay, got it. Um, good, okay, good so with those things being said, we have two things that we that I wanted to propose. Um, the first is uh, the discussion of our meetings and how we do them. Um, I was approached by Paul who who asked if, if we might be interested in hybrid meetings. Um, so if anyone was not comfortable coming into town hall or not able to come into town hall for the meeting, then we would do um, some of us here and some of us on Zoom. So we would still have to have a Zoom. We would still have to talk into the computer. Um, but just a suggestion and thoughts about that. Um, if you oh. want to to think about that for a day or two, you know, we have what, what, the time. What is to the do current that. situation on time wise for the town? I believe um, there are some boards that are doing hybrid and there are others that are still continuing on Zoom. Um, and I think the federal um, ruling on that was that we have until the end of July, if I'm if I'm thinking correctly, and please don't quote me on that because I could oh, be slightly off. It's usually by state, though. Like New York State okay, has so, been for two years now. Okay, so so it's so the the state ruling then is uh, yeah. the I, I think it's the end of July that we would mm -hmm. be back remote for August. Uh, mm -hmm. Excuse me, not remote, um, in person. Yeah, I, I I won't personally don't mind coming in. But I like having the option of, of, of uh, hybrid, you know, for, um, you know, in the wintertime that the weather's bad, mm -hmm. we could still have a meeting and not yeah. have to worry I'm about in, coming in. I'm in South Carolina today, so I can't, I couldn't be there. Unless <laughs> <it's not laughs> exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. assuming that if we wanted to do the hybrid method for now, anyway, I don't know what things are going to look like in the wintertime, but at least for now. Um, if we wanted to do that, then we would have to make sure that our IT director is available to help with any technical issues that we may or may not have. Um, but if that's something that we're interested in when we set our next meeting date, I can um, check in with him and see if he would be available on that date to do is that. Is he available now, today? I don't know. I didn't, didn't I mean, check why, in with why, him. If he's not available today, why does he need to be available next time? Because it's more complicated when some of us are remote and some of us are not, I guess. Um, I, I have not yet experienced a hybrid meeting myself, um, so I don't know exactly how that works. But um, I guess it's a bit more complicated with the technical side than all of us being remote or all of us being in person. Oh, that's a bummer. Yeah. I mean, we could always try it out and see how it works. And if we don't like it, then we could go back to either fully remote or potentially um, fully in person. So it's up to you guys. If you want to think about it, we can, you know, think about it for a week and then um, let me know and I can reach out I don't, to them. I don't mind being in person if I'm in town, but right. we, only, we only need two of us in town. So. Okay. Well, so I, I can. Pres um, I personally think we should all be meeting all in person or all not. And I really, so the, the, the oh. hybrid mode, I don't, I don't appreciate, I don't want to tie up another person. So no, I don't see, if we can't all meet together in person, I think we should all continue to meet in Zoom. Well, let, let's all meet in person. And if for some reason, we don't have two people that can meet, then we'll have to just change the date of the meeting. Okay. Let me check in with well, Paul to see to... if that's an option for us. And I will oh. let you all know, okay. because I, I don't know that that was where oh. he was thinking no, about no, going, I... but. But let, also, me throw, let, let me throw in who, as a person who has experienced hybrid meetings, and we do we do it every Sunday at, at our church service. Um, uh, I'd like for us to just experience, because I think it's a technology uh, improvement in a long term. Where, for example, like Ken, you're away, but we can still you can still join the meeting. Mm -hmm. um, okay. And so okay, I'm well. suggesting I'm, I'm suggesting let's just try it. And see okay, and, and, and 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 I'm just gonna say not to be I'm opposed. I, I, I think we're looking at documents, we're looking at maps, 
I understand. It's better. Understand. It's better. It's better if we meet all in person. And if we're not all going to meet in person, I don't want to tie up an IT person. Let's just all meet in, on Zoom. Let's continue to meet on Zoom until we can't meet on Zoom. Is is there in fact an IT person that would be tied up? Um, I think they just have to be available so that if we have an issue, they can yeah. come up and help us. But I don't think they, they don't have to sit in the meeting with us. Yeah. Um, but there's one available right now, for example, right? I would imagine so. I mean, I yeah. didn't check, but sure. but I would imagine someone's here at least. Yeah. I, I guess what we're asking, Kim, are we changing the tech guy's life from what he's been doing the last two years? By going well, <laughs> I mean, their life has been crazy for the past two years, but, yeah, but um, yeah. I think this, this is something that other boards and the council is doing. So I would say, are we changing it uh, extensively? No. Are we adding just a little something to their schedule for the day? Sure. Mm -hmm. uh, but I would say, are we, you know, are we becoming a bother by doing this? No. Let's try it. We and like I said too, um, you know, we can always do one meeting that way. And if we really don't yeah. feel like it's working, then we uh, can go back to either fully I'm, remote or fully in person. After one, let's try one meeting and see it well it goes. Okay, sure. and I can in the meantime I will speak with uh, Paul and ask if we can do fully uh, in person meetings because we're such a small board. Which I, if I recall, he he touched on that being that we're such a small board. Um, but, you know, don't please don't put my words in his mouth because, you know, I would like to uh, confirm that before I say that out outright that we can do that. So um, so I can check with him. And again, you know, we have time to decide that, you know what, we don't want to do this. Let's just go back to Zoom or um, so because we won't post the meeting officially um, until like a week before. And with that being said, members of the public are not yet allowed to join the meetings. So regardless, um, we wouldn't have anybody that was planning to attend and then couldn't because they can't come in. So um, so we'll move forward with it for now. And again, you know, if things change uh, or and or if that day um, there's not going to be someone available for MIT, we'll just do a fully remote meeting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I get the impression Paul sort of implying IT guy is going to be different now than he's been the last two years. You know, he's more on call. Where before he was in the building somewhere and didn't have to worry. I but think they they have a different schedule going, but uh, you know, they they're they're totally. I mean, their life was totally flipped upside down this sure. past couple of yeah. years. So they might have okay. a totally different thing than we do. <laughs> I mean, something you, um, you might not be aware of, Kim, that. Historically, we don't have to do this, but historically, we skipped one month in the summer or maybe two if you didn't have much much to get done. Mm -hmm. so, so along those lines, um, I have some other things to talk about, too, that I okay. want to check in with you guys. Um, and that was actually that was part of it. Um, yeah. I would like to plan for meetings. But of course, if we have nothing to talk about, there's no point in meeting because we're not just going to sit here and chat. <laughs> um, we all have busy lives. We all have things going on. So I would like to plan for those meetings. Um, and then, you know, like I said, if there's nothing to talk about, or if it's, if there's one thing and we just want to push it back to the next month and it's able to be pushed back, that's fine. Okay. Um, with that being said, um, I understand that the length of the meetings has been an issue. So my suggestion is to meet twice a month when we have a lot going on, when we have documents to talk about. Um, so my suggestion was to meet every other week. And again, I want to make that clear when we have the things that we need to talk about in the summer months. It's a slower time for all uh, for this particular office when it comes to board members signing on things. So maybe we slow down a little bit. Uh, sometimes even around this time of the year, it starts to slow down. So we potentially don't need two meetings a month, but uh, just a thought, we don't have to decide on that today. Uh, looking ahead at my calendar and Teresa's calendar, we can't do it next month anyway. Um, so just throwing that out there, something to think about that maybe we consider after the summer months um, when there's more paperwork. So just a, just a thought. Um, so with that being so, said, so that was- you, so, so you would, of course, let us know in advance so that we could plan. 
Okay. Yeah. And so what we would do is, um, you know, if, if, if we decide, okay, yep, we want to do that for June, for example, in the, in the May meeting, we would schedule the two meetings and then, you know, go on from there. If we yeah. find out that maybe the second meeting, we have nothing to talk about, then we cancel it and we, we just go into, um, to July. Yeah. Um, but I think, you know, maybe let's not do that for the summer months because it is quieter and I don't think we need to meet twice a month. And, and, and if there is nothing to talk about, then we can certainly skip a month. Okay. okay. At some point I'd recommend going out six months with dates. I like that too. Yeah. Okay. Cause I know um, we go to two meetings a month. I'm probably going to miss one a month because of travel and stuff. Mm -hmm. So unless mm -hmm. we have zoom. I'll miss at least one one a month, but okay. we'll cross that when we get to it. Okay. Yeah. Just, I mean, think about that for now. Um, and then the last thing that I wanted to mention was potentially changing the time of our meetings. So I know we're backing up to lunchtime. Um, I know like Teresa and I have only so much time to be able to, to fluctuate. I'm running into some trouble with other meetings on these days. So my suggestion would be 930, but I don't know what your... Um, schedules look like. So again, if we don't want to do that for the next meeting, that's okay. But just a thought, um, you know, to try Is to make Thursday a, a Thursday, not the best day of the week for you, Kim. It seems like lately, it just doesn't matter what day it is. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. If you look at my calendar, you go, Oh my God. Um, so, okay. but, but I'm really open to any day. Um, Thursdays and Tuesdays, if we're going to do 930, those are the best days for me to do that. But I mean, I can do any day. Tuesdays are not good for me, but. Okay. But yeah. So, I mean, I can go, do anything. If you want to we... go earlier, that's fine. Uh, okay. As long as that means that uh, the uh, length of the meeting doesn't extend. <laughs> right. And that's, that would be the intention to just make it earlier so that we can get through it quicker. Uh yeah or not not quicker necessarily but we can get through it if we do have to extend slightly we're not backing up into lunch for all of us but also um if we are going to do two meetings a month then the the meetings will be much shorter because you know we'll split up all that we have to talk about so something to think about um when scheduling this next meeting if we want to try an earlier meeting and see how it works that would be great if not we want to wait till the, the following that's okay too um, and with that being said, I guess if, if everyone is okay with scheduling the next meeting, um, we can do that at this time. Sounds good. Okay. okay. Um, looking forward, we currently have a meeting scheduled for the 12th, but that's the first day of my schooling. Um, and I have that on the 12th and the 19th of May. So if we wanted to stick with a Thursday, that would leave the 5th, um, the 26th. Okay, I Teresa is out, so we could always push back a wet to a Wednesday if that works for everyone, or uh, you know, we can move things around if need be. The, the next meeting I have scheduled is the 19th, and you're saying we want to change that? Yeah, because I won't be able to attend. I have school that day. Right. What day do you have? Um, so school, so the classes are remote, so they are Thursday, uh, Friday. Yeah, Thursdays and Fridays. So it's the 12th and the 13th of May and the 19th and the 20th of May. Okay. I could go. Yeah, hold on. So we could, so, so the 5th is completely yeah. available and then the night, the 26th we can do and we would just be missing Teresa. 18th. I can do the 26th. Yeah, I can do the 26. That's good. That's good for you, Rich. Okay. Okay. And that will also give us plenty of time to figure out how we want to do the meeting. Uh, oh, and then 30. Do the you want to do 930? Is that okay with everyone? Absolutely. Okay. Yep. I exist okay. for the convenience of the principal assessor and Teresa. <laughs> <laughs> Why, thank you. <laughs> um, and, and, you know, if we do that and we find out this is way too early, it doesn't work, um, we, can, we can change that as I've well. I've already had five cups of coffee by that time. <laughs> <laughs> so May 26th at 930. Okay, that sounds great. 
Okay. okay, if there's nothing else to be discussed, um, we do have a quick executive session that we can go into where we will be discussing uh, motor vehicle excise abatements, personal exemptions, and a few overvaluations. Um, oh, and then I move, I move to go into executive please. session for those purposes. Okay, and, and I also just want to make sure that it's we intend to close the meeting, uh, adjourn directly after the executive session. So we will not okay. be coming back into public session. All right. Okay. So moved. Excellent. All right. With that being said, I'm going to end the recording.